The Goosebumps franchise has a ton of monsters, and while there's a lot of good ones, the monster who sits at the top is Slappy. The living dummy has been around since the beginning of Goosebumps, and over the years, we've seen him evolve. With all these different versions of Slappy though, which one is the best, and which one is the worst? We went through the Goosebumps TV series, movies, audiobooks, and other mediums, and have ranked every version of Slappy from worst to best. Alright, at the very bottom, we have Slappy from the Goosebumps Horrorland series. I really love the Horrorland books, and the audiobooks were awesome and well produced, but they didn't always get the right narrator. The first time this version of Slappy appeared was in Revenge of the Living Dummy. The story was narrated by a woman named Alyssa Huntingcut. She does a good job voicing all the other characters, but Slappy, not so much. You want to know how bad it sounds? Just take a listen. Then he raised both fists in front of me. I can hurt you, Brittany, he snarled. I'm not playing games. Get up and get dressed. Need I say more? The next time Slappy really appears in Horrorland is in Streets of Panic Park. We get a new narrator, but Slappy's voice is still pretty bad. Slappy! Brittany and Molly screamed at once. That's Mr. Slappy to you! He screeched. I should mention though, that Slappy makes a brief appearance in the fifth Horrorland book, Dr. Maniac vs. Robbie Schwartz. Mark Thompson is the one who does the narration, and his Slappy is better, but still not great. Before they could answer, the dummy spoke in a hoarse, tinny high voice. Who made you so stupid? This isn't a staring contest! Pick up the token, jerk face! It's sad to say, but the Goosebumps Horrorland version of Slappy is easily the worst one. Up next is the classic Goosebumps audiobooks. In 2015, Scholastic made audiobook versions of 15 books from the original Goosebumps series. It was cool, but again, the voice they chose for Slappy just wasn't good. His blue eyes glared up at me. His grin grew wider. Amy! It's time you and I had a little talk. He sounds more like a wicked witch than a living dummy. I rank this version a little higher than the Horrorland Slappy though, because at least they didn't give him a high-pitched voice. Getting a little better, we have the Horrorland Fright Show. Don't know what that was? Well, the Horrorland Fright Show was a Goosebumps attraction at Disney World. During the show, Slappy appears and plans on making the audience his slaves. Beyond saying a few lines, the only thing Slappy really does is throw the host, a maze of the magician, into a cage. In the end, Slappy is defeated when he and the other monsters get scared off by the executioner. Kind of a lame way to go out, but on the positive side, the Horrorland Fright Show Slappy doesn't look half bad. It's cool that they based him off the TV show, even if this is probably the tallest version of Slappy we've ever seen. Besides that though, this version of Slappy isn't that good. I understand it's a stage show, so I don't want to be too critical. However, Slappy's voice, while not awful, does sound weird. <laughs> oh, I... Hey, who's working your head? You look almost lifelike. <laughs> Next, we have Goosebumps Horror Town. This is a fun mobile game that features a ton of monsters and characters from all the different Goosebumps books. And of course, Slappy is one of them. This isn't my favorite design of Slappy, but I think it works well for the game. There isn't any voice acting, but Slappy's dialogue still sounds on point and fits with his character. Just with the nature of Horror Town, there isn't a ton to talk about with this version of Slappy. There's nothing really awful about his adaptation, but nothing amazing either. Horror Town is a very middle of the road version of the living dummy, which is why I ranked him right in the middle. Coming in at number 3, we have Slappy World. It's super cool that Slappy has his own series of books. I'll be honest, I haven't read as many of them as I would have liked, but what I have read, I've really enjoyed. I like how crazy the stories get, like in Ghost of Slappy, where Slappy actually dies. It's also pretty cool cool having Slappy be kind of the host of each story and breaking it up to give a little narration. The only thing I don't really like about this version of Slappy is, wait for it, his voice. After Joe Freya provides the voice for the living dummy, and I will say, he at least does a passable job. Yes, it's Slappy World. You're only screaming in it. <laughs> This just isn't what Slappy sounds like to me. It's definitely better than a lot of the other Slappies we've heard, but I don't like it. However, everything else about Slappy from Slappy World, I do like. At number two, we have Slappy from the Goosebumps movies. 
still to this day, I'm so happy we got to see Slappy on the big screen. The Goosebumps movie version of Slappy looks great. They did an excellent job bringing this character to life. I love in both the first and second Goosebumps movies that Slappy is kind of the leader of the monsters. In fact, one of my favorite scenes is when Slappy is outside the high school rallying the monsters together. Also, this version of Slappy does some pretty evil things, like knocking a teenager off a ladder. I think the films also did a good job of balancing Slappy's comedic side and his more sinister and evil one. Jack Black as the voice of Slappy is also great. In fact, when Slappy says, Oh shucks, you giving me, oh what's the word, goosebumps. <laughs> It gives me goosebumps too. Now, my only problem with the movie Slappy is that there's actually a total of three people that voice him. Trying to hide from me? That's like hiding from yourself! Why settle for a small family, Walter, when we can project my power everywhere? Papa first pinned me in Night of the Living Dummy. The voices are similar, but still different, and it's just one of those little inconsistencies that bugs me. Also, in case you were wondering, I'm counting Slappy in the games Night of Scares and Dead of Night as part of this ranking, since the games are kind of tie-ins to the movies, and Jack Black and Mick Winger provide Slappy's voice. Anyways, movie Slappy is great, but there's one version that's better, and that is... The Goosebumps TV Show The creators of the Goosebumps series were given a huge task when bringing Arlstein's stories to life, and they knocked it out of the park with Slappy. Now the TV show did take some creative freedom and change Slappy's look, but honestly, I think he looks even scarier. On top of that, Slappy's voice actor, Cal Dodd, does an amazing job. This is the first time Slappy the Dummy had spoken, and Dodd's voice was great. Not to mention, this version of Slappy has some pretty good lines. Hey Sarah! While the TV show Slappy does still have a humor side, I think he's scarier than the movie version. I mentioned his appearance made him scarier, but just the way he behaves and acts is more unsettling than in the films. This might just be because the TV show maybe tried to be a bit scarier than the movies, but whatever they did, it worked. There's scenes with this dummy that are still creepy to watch. The only thing that's disappointing is that there was never an episode based on the first Night of the Living Dummy book. Rumor has it that the episode is made, but actually got banned. Luckily for you though, we know the truth. To find out, watch the video on screen.